a lot of people want to know about breast augmentation. It's a very po popular sure. surgery. Let's go to Jennifer from San Jose. Good morning, Jennifer. Hi. Hi, Dr. Manley. Um, the, uh, a, an often asked question, uh, saline versus silicone, especially in regards to the uh, scarring that often forms. Sure. Uh, saline versus silicone, it has to do with the filler that's inside the shell. The shells are pretty similar. They're both a silicone shell. Uh, the saline implant, I always I call it the honest implant because uh, the thing I worry about most is not so much the scarring as leakage. And if a saline implant leaks, it's like a water balloon. The water just leaks right out, so we know with the lack of volume that that's happened. The gel implant's a little harder to tell. The gel can stay within the scar that forms around the implant, and it makes it difficult to know if there is a leak. Plus, the gel is pretty sticky. It's cohesive, uh, so it doesn't flow like water does. In terms of scarring, uh, in the past, the silicone gel-filled implants had about twice the rate of scarring as the saline-filled implants. And by scarring, it's not what you see on the outside, it's what forms around the implant itself. And if that scar becomes tight, it can make the breast feel hard or even move the position of the implant. Uh, the majority of the time, that doesn't happen. But when it does, uh, it may require surgery in order to fix it. Okay. Uh, you know, there was a controversy some years ago uh, about the silicone. Sure. And that's, I don't know if you want to address that. That's there were concerns that the silicone could cause uh, cancer, could cause uh, scleroderma, lupus, some of the connective tissue disorders. That's been shown not to be true at this point. There's been large enough studies to compare women who are matched for age looking at those problems with implants, without implants. We find the same numbers in both groups. Uh, some you know, women that have the implants certainly prefer the silicone just because it feels more natural. Do that's the big advantage of the gel implants, especially in the reconstructive arena when there, where there isn't as much tissue to cover an implant. The gel implants tend to feel softer and more like a breast does. Uh, Saline tends to be a little stiffer and can wrinkle sometimes and give rippling. Did, did you find that people went and swapped them out? Well, you know, it's interesting because when there was this huge controversy and there wasn't as much scientific data showing that the problems that were being said were were not true, uh, a lot of women changed from gel to saline, and many of them were not happy because of the way it felt. Then the controversy kind of settled down, and I've seen more women sort of right after that who came back for the gel implants because they like the way that they feel so much better. Well, you know, in the news, and I pulled this up, uh, Christina Applegate, is yes. the, the star, um, was uh, diagnosed with breast cancer. And because she has breast cancer in the family, she opted for, it's like a prophylactic, a surgery, yeah, to, to yes. actually take both breasts. She's only yes. 36 years old. Well, she's a young woman. Uh, I don't know if they've done any uh, genetic testing, but certainly you can tell just from family history whether there's a history of young people in the family having cancer. There are indicators through tests that can be done to look for these cancer genes. And if they're there, it increases the risk of getting a second cancer. So um, she, for her health, opted to... Uh, and probably for peace of mind. Right. Uh, right. To have both removed so she doesn't have to be as concerned about breast cancer coming back. Which has got to be very traumatic, but uh, it is done. So do you do reconstruction? Constructive surgery. Obviously, she has yes. now the option to. I mean, I, I, yes. I've read that she actually is going to have that done. She's going Surely. to have breast augmentation. And it's totally elective. Uh, there was a time when most women did not have any reconstruction. They live without their breasts, and certainly you can function without breasts. You can use an external prosthesis, like a big padded bra, uh, and that works okay as long as you're wearing clothing. Uh, out, out of clothing in uh, bathing suits, uh, it's tough. Uh, reconstruction now is done more than half of the time, and there are different areas where you can reconstruct. You can reconstruct just the mound, you can reconstruct the nipple, the areola, you can get to each level of detail. And I find that uh, for the women who desire that, they just feel so much better and they feel more complete. Yeah, and, and uh, how much time do they have to wait after the mastectomy? Does it, it can be started during the mastectomy surgery. So, so you there was a really time when the, there was actually a time when you were diagnosed as having a lump in your breast. You went to surgery and didn't know whether you were going to wake up with a mastectomy, with a biopsy, because we didn't we didn't know that leaving the biopsy site alone for a while didn't cause trouble. Then we found out you can leave it in there, come back later, do a mastectomy, and then there was concerns that reconstruction would interfere with discovery of recurrences. We've pretty much gotten around that hurdle, and now so for most women, we can start reconstruction at the same time. All right. We've got the calls. They're, okay. they're stacking up here, and uh, you also brought some, some pictures that we need to go to a quick break. Sure. Uh, but if you want more information about Dr. Joseph Mealy, you can call 925-943-6343 or go to drmealy.com. You brought some pictures. Let's yes. go through those really quickly so okay. I can get to these calls. Sure. Uh, let's go ahead and show this one. This is a sort of standard breast augmentation. 
Uh, you can see she had some volume beforehand uh, and had, had actually a little bit of what we call pseudotosis. The breast is sagging, mm -hmm. but it's just the breast tissue, not the nipple placement. So she's so maybe case, one size looks pretty just natural. Just increase her bust size. Okay, yeah. and let's go to the next one. Uh, very similar. You can see sort of a loss of volume in the upper part of the breast, especially on her left breast. You can see it sort of indents a little bit there. I find that really bothers people. They don't like that. They so don't. if we can restore that fullness, they're very happy. Okay. This is again behind the muscles, so we get a nice tapered uh, appearance above and still keep the curve underneath. Okay, and next picture? Uh, very similar. This is someone who really didn't have a lot of breast tissue. Mm -hmm. uh, and again, behind the muscle can give us a nice sort of tapered teardrop shape. Uh, and at the same time increase her bust without it looking too round. Okay, well great. Uh, so let me jump right into these calls because I, I, I really want folks to get their questions sure. into you. Liz from Stockton, are you uh, with us this morning? Yes. You have a question for the doctor. I've had three children and my, my breast uh, have went south. In order to get a lift, would I have to get a breast implant or would it just be able to be lifted? Uh, they're independent. So if the volume is sufficient, uh, then we don't need to add an implant. An implant really just adds volume. Sometimes it's used to add support or add volume preferentially to the upper pole. But if you're happy with the volume, uh, sometimes just doing the lift is all you need. Does that answer your question, Connie? Oh, I'm sorry, Liz. I'm sorry. <laughs> talk to... Okay, we'll, we'll get to Connie in a second here. How about Stephanie from Point Reyes? Good morning, Stephanie. Good morning. Hi. Hi. I was wondering, do you feel it is safe to do a breast augmentation and lift at the same time? Oh, we got a theme going to on. To do the two operations together? Yes. Yeah. In fact, uh, there are some advantages to doing them together because they, it's sort of like a push-me-pull-you. The lift is tightening the skin, changing the shape of the breast, whereas the implant is adding volume and kind of pushing back. So it's actually nice to be able to do the two together. Okay, uh, hopefully that answers your question. Stephanie, let's move on. Uh, Connie from Pacifica, you have a question about breast and tummy. Um, yes, I had a gastric bypass approximately five years ago. I just turned 60 and I have a hanging skin and belly and uh -huh. breast, and I wondered if I'm a candidate at sure. my age to be able to repair this. The age itself is not uh, something I worry about so much. Uh, if you're over 50, I may get an EKG where I wouldn't do that normally. Uh, it's good to see your primary doctor. Uh, I find most patients who've gone through the, that type of surgery are usually pretty healthy because they have a doctor who's following them and they're up on their nutrition and that sort of stuff. If you do have other problems such as hypertension, diabetes, uh, cholesterol problems sometimes are, are found in, in the same patients, uh, then they need to be controlled. But as long as they're controlled, it's okay. Okay. Uh, doctor, you know, what we're talking about are like apples and oranges, bre breast augmentation surgery related it, it, compared to uh, the tummy tuck. Mm -hmm. it, it's not nearly as, as serious of a surgery, is it? I mean, it, they... They're both real surgery. I, I treat all surgery like serious surgery. Of course, yeah. Uh, the aug breast augmentation and the tummy tuck are two of the surgeries that are, tend to be more sore than a lot of the things I do. Things like facelifts, eyelids, uh, really don't bother people very much uh, for the vast majority of them. Uh, as a result, I do a couple of things differently. I use a pain pump. Uh, I know it's somewhat controversial, but I think it's helpful to use a little pump that puts some local anesthesia into the area around the implants or with the tummy tuck into the nerves that are going towards the tummy. It seems to help those first couple days when it's the most sore, and I find the faster you can get people up and moving, the faster they recover, the better they feel. Okay, so but I, I guess what in terms of just the the, um, the magnitude of it, the, yes. the you're still under a general there, for I both. I do both or? under general anesthesia. Yeah. Okay. So and some of the revision work we can do under local, but I think since the majority of the implants I put in are underneath the muscle, I want to be able to relax that muscle a little bit. I want to be sure the patients are comfortable because if they're not, I I won't proceed. And and in terms of also how many how many surgeries are done, breast augmentation uh, is is done quite a bit. Quite I, a bit, I about four hundred thousand last year. Four hundred thousand. Yeah. A year. Uh, compared to tummy tuck? Tummy tuck, uh, still quite, it's still quite popular. It's always in the top five. Okay. All right. Well, thank you very much. I'm sorry we couldn't get to the rest of the calls, and we are out of time. Wow. Wonderful to have you with us uh, for a full half hour, Dr. Mealy. Nice to be Glad here. to have you back. For more information about Dr. Joseph Mealy, you can call 925-943-6353 or go